I'd like to welcome you guys to the third installment of uh, what we're now calling the uh, SoCal Bite Fishing Academy. Uh, thanks to uh, my editor at BD Outdoors for coming up with that name. I think it pretty much sums things up. Uh, staying with Spotted Bay Bass this week. If you're new to this, uh, we, this is the third in a series of videos that cover all aspects of fishing in Southern California. I welcome you to uh, go down to the uh, description and see the links to the uh, previous articles if you've, uh, or videos if you've already missed them. Anyway, last week we talked about um, <clears throat> where spotted bay bass are in the bay, how they relate to structure, how they relate to tides, uh, all those different things. And uh, this week, you don't have to listen to me talk all the time, I asked uh, my friend Jimmy Decker to uh, break down some of the techniques he uses. And while there's a lot of different techniques you can use, they all break down to either power fishing or finesse fishing, and he covers his favorites here. So, uh, welcome Jimmy. Hey, it's Captain Jimmy Decker here, uh, Newport Harbor. Today's uh, December 30th, so it's the end of the year. We had a little rain last night, not the optimum conditions today, real low tide. And I came out with Eric Landon's fine and fished our favorite way to fish the bay, and that's throwing crankbaits. Probably one of the most effective and fun ways to fish spotties or calico or sand bass, anything. It's probably my favorite application for fishing any type, any type of bass on the west coast. And it's really good in the harbor here in Newport Beach. You've got eelgrass beds, mooring cans, little ledges, drop-offs, uh, you know, a lot of different areas where you can target the, the bass with these crankbaits. And the thing about fishing the crankbait it's not so much about always having it thumping the bottom, it's just changing up your cadence and getting it to go the right speed that's going to trigger the strike. I had a bite today that was probably four feet underneath the crank, four feet underneath the trolling motor, <clears throat> when normally you would expect all your bites to be in 12 to 14 feet, which is pretty much what we were fishing today. The best way to, well, I'll run through a few things. This one here, this is a CR-16. It runs 16 feet. It's really good for Newport. Rarely are fishing anything over 14 or 15 feet. Berkeley makes these dredgers. They come in 17.5 and 20.5 running. They got a bunch of different colors for these. These come really good right out of the box. Super sharp hooks, really good split rings. A lot of these other ones, you have to switch out the hooks and the split rings because you'll, uh, you'll get them straightened out if you hang a big fish. 10 foot rain shadow rod. This is the rod Eric made me. Makes it a lot easier to get that really long cast. The further you can cast your bait out there, the quicker it's gonna get down to the depth and the more area you're gonna to have to work your bait back towards the boat. If you make a short cast, by the time you get your bait down to where the strike zone's gonna be, you're already three quarters of the way back to the boat and then your bait's starting to come back up. So a long cast, I like, I like to wind it down pretty fast so I get it about three quarters of the way down and then slow the cadence down till I start feeling if I'm making contact with the bottom or the eelgrass. And then a lot of guys just keep a steady wind. I like to vary my retrieve with kind of herky-jerky stop and go and it just gives that bait a little bit different action. Every once in a while stop it. We both got bit today on the total pause. I think I was reaching for the trolling motor and Eric was like scratching his ear or something and bang the fish come up and, and take a whack at it. Long cast, get it down, try to figure your cadence out. This morning Eric was whining a little slower, I was a little quick. As soon as I slowed my cadence down a little bit I started getting bites. Your rod's already loaded up from the resistance of the bait, so when you do get a bite, you're not so much really having to swing to try to tear its mouth off. It's more of just keep winding and sweep the rod. Try to keep that rod loaded up and don't pull too hard. Let the rod do the work because these little treble hooks, you'll end up pulling them out occasionally. A lot of times they'll just have one little hook. You know, one of those little back hooks will be stuck right in the corner of their mouth and if you do the herky-jerky or really try to horse a fish in, you'll end up pulling that hook out of its face. So long cast, get it down, get comfortable with your cadence, figuring out how it's going to bite, go ahead and fish that till it stops working and then you have to figure it all out again. Started out catching them on the outside edge of the mooring cans in deeper water where it rolls up from like 17 feet to 12 feet. 
fished that until it didn't work. Then we went inside and we started fishing on the back side of the mooring cans where it comes up from another channel from like 13 feet up to 12 or 11 feet and started catching them again in there. So green, green chartreuse, purple, brown. Eric was fishing uh, 6XD. A little bit of yellow, blue on the top. They were both working really good. You can see this bait's already had the hardware switched out on it. It's got a some kind of bigger owner, probably 3X hook on the front and back, and that's what you want to have, along with like a 50 or 60 pound split ring on there. That's really important, because not only is this my bay rod setup, but this is my eight pound calico setup at Clemente or Cat when we're cranking over there. So you always got to be ready for that big fish. If you don't have a 10 foot rod, doesn't mean you can't go throw a crankbait. This is another rain shadow. This is an eight foot rod. This is my first crankbait rod I had that I got at Fred Hall, I don't know, six or seven years ago. I think it cost me, I think they were selling these things for like 35 or 40 bucks for all the components, not this Gucci carbon fiber handle, but everything else on here. Eight foot rod, really limber. You can guys can see this thing's you know, just like my 10 footer, it's a lot of, lot of bend. And you get good with casting this rod around the docks or if you're in a smaller skiff or a, you know, little 13 foot whaler or something where you don't have room or access to store 10 foot rods, an eight foot rod is plenty. I wouldn't go shorter than eight feet myself personally. Uh, just you, the, the amount of distance you lose in your casting as you go down in shorter, rod length is a is a big deterrent for going to anything shorter same thing beefy hooks beefy split rings fish it all the same cast out rod tip low pointing down unless rod tip low pointing down when you're doing your usual thing and you're making good contact or you're in the right area when you start feeling your baits really digging a hole or you're snagging a lot of eelgrass, you adjust the depth of your crankbait by holding your rod tip up a little bit higher. So if you're hitting the bottom, do, 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 you can lift your rod tip up a foot or two and keep turning, then all of a sudden now you're ticking the top of the grass. The opposite is, if you're fishing a 16 foot crankbait, you know, they don't run 16 feet in salt water. So you might be fishing 13 or 14 feet and you just don't feel like you're getting down, especially with the 10 foot rods, you just stick that tip in the water a couple feet, foot and a half foot down in the water. That gets your bait down that extra foot, 16 inches to where you can, uh, you can get it in that zone where you want to be. In the bay, you pretty much want to be close to the bottom all the time. Outside fishing calico bass, We'll do another video on that. It's, it's a totally different story, but used to be a real slow retrieve reel. This is an old uh, Abu Garcia winch. This is 541 or something like that. It takes the load off of your arms and your hand from trying to crank that bait down real fast is where a higher speed retrieve reel makes it a little tougher to get it down. But now Eric and I both went, I thought I was fishing a 300. I'm actually fishing a 200. These are 641, I think, or 671, something like that. And I don't even notice the difference. And it makes it so much easier. Burn it down a couple turns and then slow it down. You don't even notice. You don't really need that big wench style reel, you know, unless you were throwing something that dug to like 20 feet or 25 feet. So not really a big fan of those big things. We tried fishing docks a little bit today. Tide was so low, there wasn't really any water on them. But probably the, the best dock bait that I've seen over the last few years has been this, uh, this fluke. Uh, it's not Kitech, who makes, oh, come to me. Zoom. Zoom fluke. Yeah, it looks just like a little anchovy, you know, a little quarter ounce or three eighths ounce ball head. You know, the only, the only problem you have when you're fishing these is you will straighten those out occasionally, you know, but there's that, it's just the way it is. You can't really go to a beefier hook on that head because it weighs the bait down too much and it's not going to go how you want it to do it. Very simple presentation. 
you know, if you're good with your trolling motor, you can just set it up and roll right along the docks, or you can switch off with your buddy, one guy on the console running the boat, another guy in the bow, and it's just basically just flipping it into the flipping it into the pilings. And I'm more of a line watcher, so I'll flip it out there, and as that and as that bait's sinking, I'm just watching the line for any kind of little twitch or turk, or it'll just take off to one side or the other. That's a bite. Go ahead, put it in gear, and swing on those. You got to swing when they're on there because a lot of times they'll be halfway around the piling or uh, are running for the eelgrass. But this is deadly effective in all the bays. You know, San Diego, I've seen this thing catch 60 fish in an afternoon when we were down there one day. So, little zoom fluke. This is probably the go to color. You know, the only other one I might even think about getting would be some kind of green back with a silver belly, something like that. It looks a little bit more like a smelt. If you guys are having a hard time figuring out where to put your hooks, drill a hole in your trigger right here of your reel seat, and then you just stick your hooks right in there. You don't have to fumble around. You're not poking out ring guides or stuff like that. Every, every rod of ours is all set up like that, and uh, the bait's always right there. As soon as you get to the spot, you're just out and in. So there's a, that, that's, that's the bonus tip for today. I was attempting feebly to fish <clears throat> this is a little Ned rig okay this the way that this head and bait is set up and the way it works is come to me hey first time when this thing hits the bottom this baits really buoyant so when it hits the bottom it stands up on the head like that and this tail sticks right up and down and then you just hop it and it comes back up it looks like ghost shrimp or something you know it actually looks like it's afraid of the fish coming and they'll come in and swoop in on it this is six pound to 20 pound on a really super light spinning rod I haven't fished this thing in a couple years I just brought it out today to see if I might get lucky and try to get something on there but it's uh, it's a really good setup too to use. If we would have had a little more water in here today, we probably could have caught something. This is a pretty good color for the bays. This, you know, army green with some kind of chartreuse on there. Here's another thing. These hook keepers that come standard on your spinning rods and stuff, they're not meant for the hook to go into the hole, okay? They're not meant to be hooked to be rammed through there. The bend of the hook just slides over the slides over the little roof and that's how those go in a lot of guys can't get them in there so what they do is they bend that out with their pliers so they can stick it in like that so it just goes like that and then you're on so fun day today caught probably i don't know 15 17 18 fish somewhere like that had the camera going for a few of them caught a couple nice ones caught a bunch of dinks but you know for the end of the year kind of dreary day we got solid three hours out on the water, had a good time, and, you know, be sitting on the couch watching, you know, lame football. Well, there you have it. I couldn't have uh, said it much better myself, and I uh, thank Jimmy for uh, helping me out here. Uh, I'll be back next week with a breakdown of tackle for spotted bay bass, and as I mentioned before, um, this tackle will not just be for spotted bay bass, but it will be the beginning of your inshore fishing arsenal if you're uh, looking to put one together and you fish on your own boat. This same tackle will be used for calicos and sand bass and uh, other things outside the harbor as well. So I'll see you next week.